saltwater marshes of Cape Cod, a marine biome. Marine regions cover about three-fourths of the Earth's surface and include oceans, coral reefs, and estuaries. It creates much of the world's oxygen supply and can take in huge amounts of carbon dioxide. And the evaporation of the seawater provides rainwater for land. Here at the Fort Hill area in Easton, Mass, one can walk about the historic landmarks and be close to nature with a wonderful vantage point to view the undisturbed marshlands and wildlife at the Cape Cod National Seashore. These estuaries, where freshwater streams or rivers merge with the ocean, the mixing of waters such as different salt concentrations creates a very interesting and unique ecosystem. Microflora, the algae, and macroflora such as seaweeds and marsh grasses can be found here. The water in the salt marsh is not as salty as the ocean, but not as fresh water either. This in-between water is called brackish. The plants and animals that live there are tolerant of salt. This is called halophytic. Salt marshes are important for many reasons. They absorb storm surges, so to reduce the flooding inland. They trap and bind sediments, so to act as a filter for pollution. The smooth cord grass supplies oxygen to our world through photosynthesis. Cord grass prevents erosion and provides shelter for many animals, such as fish and crab, and, and anchors for some shellfish, such as mussels. In turn, the small invertebrates fertilize the grass and aerate its roots. The high marsh, the upper marsh, is only underwater during the highest tides of each month. This is the least salty area of the salt marsh and has more types of plants in addition to cord grasses like salt hay, spike grass, shore grass, shrubberies and uh, sedges and rushes. Salt marshes are coastal wetlands that are flooded and drained by salt water brought in by the tides. They are marshy because the soil may be composed of deep mud and peat. Peat is made of decomposing plant matter that is often several feet thick. Peat is waterlogged, root filled, and very spongy. Because salt marshes are frequently submerged by the tides and contain a lot of decomposing plant material, Oxygen levels in the peat can be extremely low, a condition called hypoxia. Hypoxia is caused by the growth of bacteria which produce that sulfurous rotten egg smell that is often associated with the marshes and mud flats. Here's a side view. The intertidal zone is where the ocean meets the land. Sometimes it's submerged and other times exposed as the waves and tides come in and out. In those areas usually submerged during the high tide, that's the most diverse array of algae, small animals such as herbivorous snails, crabs, sea stars, and small fishes. It is also a nursery for those. The next area is the mud flats. These include invertebrates like fiddler crabs, snails, clams, and worms. This is where the smooth cord grass grows. It can tolerate high salt levels by secreting excess salt. Cord grass prevents the erosion and provides shelter for many. The high marsh area is only underwater at the highest tides each month. On the mud flats, which are exposed during low tides, when birds like aigrets, herons, sandpipers, and gulls, and mammals like raccoons will hunt for animals burrowed in the mud. It is a rich habitat, especially for migrating birds, 
that use the salt marsh as a place to rest and feed during their long flights. This biome supports a diverse fauna, including the tiny list turn endangered species here at the Cape Cod Salt Marsh. Birds of prey like osprey and northern harriers fly low over the salt marsh to hunt. Fiddler crabs are significant organizers of the tidal marsh community. Like earthworms and soil, these detritivores burrow and aerate the earth. The presence of these crabs indicates a greater diversity of marsh organisms. Not only with the benefit of aeration and growth of cord grass, but it may help affect turnover processing of other nutrients and other chemicals in the sediment. But if overpopulated, their burrowing activity can erode the undermined marsh banks. But is the fiddler crab creating all the havoc? According to recent studies, the real culprit is the overpopulation growth of the purple marsh crab. Dr. Mark Burness, Christine Holdrich, and other Brown University students have been researching the hypothesis that overgrazing by this native nocturnal herbivorous crab is responsible for dieback in the lower marsh. Marshes are being overrun by the purple marsh crab because the main predator, blue crab, and finfish such as the striped bass are being overfished. So the purple marsh crabs are free to gorge on healthy fields of cord grass and once done feeding they leave behind nothing. The imbalance in species population is causing erosion to these marshes. All over the Cape we are seeing marsh die off. This is due to the combination of factors due to man. Before the 1930s, ditches were dug in the salt marshes on Cape Cod and other parts of the coastal New England to increase the flow of water in stagnant areas where mosquitoes breed uh, and to give the fish access up these fingers that were dredged in. Population increases, uh, development along in the coast, and increase in fishing at previously isolated areas led to a decline in the striped bass and blue crabs. They feed on the purple marsh crab. Overfertilization in ponds and marshes has killed eelgrass which provides habitat for shellfish. Many bays are clogged with algae in the summer. Now that the purple marsh crab has few predators, the purple marsh crabs are eating the cord grass that lines the edges of the ditches, ruining the banks and increasing erosion. They're widening the ditches and killing off the salt marsh. Looking westward towards Orleans from the Fort Hill area, you can see the development and seawalls built by seaside homeowners to protect from erosion and tidal storms. But they also disturb the shore's natural landscape and alter the aquifer to grow for by cutting its ability to filter and generate marshland. Like many wetlands, Salt marshes were once thought to be wastelands and were reclaimed for use in grazing or development. It is thought that as much as half of the salt marshes in the United States were filled during the 1950s through 70s. Through the Clean Water Act, Tidal and Wetland Act, and other legislation, salt marshes and other coastal wetlands have more protection than ever before. Yet, with more and more people living and recreating along the coast, coastal habitats will always come under pressure from humans. Cape Cod needs to act now to strive to sustain the marshes it has left and plan recovery. Currently, there is much debate on what we can do to solve this problem. One thing we all know, without the marshes, the Cape will be lost.